So Narad Muni uh, is finishing, he's just describing about himself to be asked. Generally, materialistic people like to talk about themselves. They like to boast. I did this, I did that. Or they like to show their visiting card with PhD, MSc, MLLB, and so many different qualifications. Because they think that myself, I am the most important. But devotees know that Krishna is most important. And I am not important. They don't talk about themselves. But here we find that Narada Muni has spoken to Vyasadeva about himself. He told how in a previous life he was the uh, son of a maidservant and how he became a great devotee as Prabhupada writes, uh, incomparable to anyone but himself. So you may ask, but well, why is Narada talking about himself? He's talking to Vyasadeva, his disciple, to convince Vyasadeva of the efficacy of devotional service. Vyasadeva's duty is to compile the Vedic literatures. In which the actual goal is only to describe about Bhagavan and Bhagavad Bhakti. And we find in the Puranas there are many narrations of great personalities and of course of the greatest personality who is Krishna. And especially we'll find the Srimad Bhagavatam is full of the narrations of very great devotees. So these narrations are recounted to show us how people in this material world can live fully Krishna conscious lifestyles. And this is Vyasadeva's duty, that's his function, to compile all his Vedic literatures. Mm. People in general, they don't know about Krishna. Maya Mukta Jiva Nahi Krishna Shvata Gyan Tatapi Krishna Koilo Bhedpura Jivari Kripai Koilo Krishna Bhedpura People are bewildered by Maya, therefore they don't know Krishna. So out of mercy to them, Krishna in the form of Vyasadeva compiles the Vedic literature. So the Vedic literature is given as knowledge of Krishna, that is in books. Is in book form, knowledge of Krishna. But within the books themselves, it is stated that one requires a guru to teach one this knowledge. You may say, well, what do I need a guru for? Everything's in the book. I have heard that in the Western countries now, they feel that lecturing in the colleges is not required. People are thinking, you just simply, it's in the book, just read the book. However, in the Vedic literature, it's described that one requires a guru. And one reason for that is that a complex knowledge requires some practical demonstration, practical training. If someone, you know, if someone says, well, I'm a heart surgeon, I studied it all in the books, so now I'll operate on your heart. Will anyone agree? There's no one to drive this bus? Okay, I'll drive it. Do you know how to drive? Yeah, I read about it in books. So you may have good theoretical knowledge, but unless there's some practical guidance, no one will trust you to do a heart operation or drive a bus. Now another reason uh, that it's required that there be gurus uh, present among us is to convince us that Krishna consciousness is real. We may read various stories in books. We may read how Prahlad Maharaj suffered all torture and remained Krishna conscious. We may read how the gopis were crying in separation from Krishna. But, how do we get the uh, practical example in our lives? We may think, well, you know, that's something in a book. Those are very exalted people and it's just in a book. So Narad Muni, he directly appeared before Vyasadeva. And he recounted his own life history and told him, you see, this was my situation. I was from a, not at all an enlightened background, just the son of a maidservant. But by the grace of great devotees, I'm now traveling and preaching Krishna consciousness. So seeing the personal example of Narad Muni, 
Vyasadev became convinced. And practically we see that people take up Krishna conscious um, by the example of devotees. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Dharma sthapan hetu sadhu vabaha. That religion is established in this world by the behavior of devotees. So when people first take up Krishna consciousness, it's not that they're fully conversant with all the details of the philosophy. But by the uh, by association with devotees, they feel these are saintly people and they their faith develops in this way. And actually in this way, many people who are not properly devotees at all, they mislead people by posing as sadhus. So it may be that... Uh, some people, they read Prabhupada's books and they think, well, this is something very wonderful. But uh, even so, they need to associate with devotees to properly understand Krishna consciousness. And sometimes, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, but we have seen in our Krishna conscious movement that sometimes people read Prabhupada's books and become enthused, but then when they make devotees, their enthusiasm goes down because they see the devotees are not behaving properly. So, the presence of devotees in the world and that devotees, they, they act properly in Krishna consciousness is very much required for the uplift of the conditioned souls. And Narad Muni gave the example of his own life to Vyasadeva, not to praise himself or to draw attention to himself, but to point out how powerful is Bhagavan Bhakti. Actually, you see, he was very humble. Sometimes among the society of rich people, you find some who they don't want to talk about their background very much. Uh, there's one of our life members in Gujarat. He's one of the richest men in India. But he comes from a very ordinary background. He's hardly literate, even in his own language, Gujarati. So now he's a multi crore businessman. He has good business sense. But he feels embarrassed because he's moving in that high society and he can't, he can hardly talk English. His, even his Hindi is not very good. So he feels some discomfiture. So we often find that people who they, they come from a low background up to high society and they, they change their manner of talking and they just like to pretend that I'm originally from this background. They don't like to let people know that they're from a, from a poor background. So Narad Muni is moving in the highest society. With all, the highest society means among the topmost devotees. Shiva, Shuka, Narada, Preme, Gada, Gada, Bhakatevi, Nada, Deke, Gora, Rashampada. And Narad Muni is moving with Shiva, Shukadev Goswami, Bhakti Nautaka, all the topmost devotees. But he, he doesn't feel ashamed to say that I'm from, I'm from uh, such a background. He's the son of a maidservant. There's no information about his father. So we can understand he's a bastard child. Bastard, that's a standard English word, but it's also used as an insult. In most languages, that word, it's used as an insult. In Hindi, what do they say? Dobra, something like that. What is that in Hindi? Dobra, something like that. Do you know? Anyway, it doesn't matter. In Canada, it must be also. There's some insulting word. If you want to insult someone, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so you don't have to say it. Yeah. But you, I'm making the point, I'm making a philosophical point here. Although in modern Western society it's not an insult because probably more than 50% of the population are like that. So anyway, the point I'm making here is that Narad Muni, he's not ashamed to say, what is my background? Sometimes we see even devotees, they say, well, actually I'm from a Brahmin family, they don't give up their caste pride. Generally, Brahmins, people born in Brahmin families, they think that we're closer to God. But it seems to me that they're further away. Because if they have a hankar, I am a Brahmin, then Krishna will never even look at them. Dinare adhik doya kare bhagavan kulin pandit dhani bara abhiman. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that Bhagavan is more kind to the fallen. Because generally persons born of high class families or who are very learned or who are very rich, they tend to be puffed up, abhiman. Whereas the only qualification to approach Krishna is one's humble service mode. 
In Brahma Vaivarta Purana it's stated that for one who is proud, it is as if there are huge, insurmountable mountains between him and the Lord. He cannot reach. So Narad Muni is shown by his personal example. How anyone, even from a most despicable background, can come to the highest stage of pure devotional service. So actually it is required that devotees move in society to set an example for others and to inspire others. Srila Prabhupada said that I am traveling all over the world just to see my disciples and help them so that they don't fall down. Because we see in the case of great devotees that was then Definitely many devotees had that experience in the presence of Srila Prabhupada and Bhakti Siddhanta Sasar Thakos. They'd say that so many times devotees would go to Prabhupada, they'd have so many anxieties, what to do, and as soon as they saw Prabhupada, immediately, just by seeing it, immediately they could understand. There's no reason for any anxiety. So it's very important that there be pure devotees in human society. A pure devotee, it doesn't necessarily mean someone who has a very, very big position or is very famous Hare Krishna. Pure devotee means one who is with pure intent serving the Lord. So actually here in Mangala ah, it's alright. Here in Mangala you are very lucky to have the association of just leave it's more of a disturbance. It's all right, people can hear. You're in Here in Mangalore, you're very fortunate to have the association of pure devotees. I myself am amazed at how, especially Ramananda Prabhu and Prem Bhakti Prabhu, they've been, it's been actually very difficult for them over all these years, but they go on very steadily with great enthusiasm and determination. Very simple... They're very simple. They don't desire any facility or opulence. They don't desire to any praise. And simply, uh, in a very peaceful manner, they go on with their service to the Lord. So you're very fortunate to have the association of such wonderful devotees. So please take advantage of that association and, and follow in their footsteps, become like them. You may think, well, how can I become like them? Of course, those of you who are in householder life, your, your manner of living won't be exactly the same. But the, the same mood of uh, unflinching devotional service that we can develop. When I first came to join the temple, see in those days usually people just used to join like that. They just come and join. So I joined the temple, I was there the first day, I didn't know about chanting 16 rounds or any, not even that, just nothing. So they gave me a mala and said, you have to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, on every bead and go around it 16 times minimum a day. And I thought, well, how can I do that? That's a lot. But then I looked all around and I saw so many devotees with their beads chanting. And I thought, well, they're all chanting 16 rounds. So I suppose if they can do it, I can do it. They come from the same kind of background as me. They didn't fly in from Mars or Atlantis or any such place. They were also a miserable person, came off the street like me. So if they can do it, I can do it. So from the first day, I was chanting 16 rounds. Of course, it took me a long time the first day. So like that, by seeing the example of devotees, um, we can get inspiration in devotional service. And it's very important that the initiated devotees especially set a very pukka standard. And they will understand, oh, initiated means very serious. You see, the minimum standard for initiation is to chant 16 rounds daily and follow four regulated principles. But if you take it that I'll just squeeze in with the minimum qualification, that won't be very good. Just like nowadays the companies, they don't just take people with a degree pass, but you have to have... Minimum standard, otherwise you don't get a job. So if you think, okay, four regs, 16 rounds, but doesn't say anything about watching TV, and I can get up at 11 o'clock in the morning and I'll chant my 16 rounds after that. So in this way we could uh, t 
take it at the very minimum standard. But that won't help us very much. Srila Prabhupada gave an example. He said that if you try to pass the exam in the first grade, then by that endeavor, then at least you'll pass. But if we think, well, I'll just try, so I'll just pass, then quite possibly we'll fail. So let's set our standards high. A devotee has no material ambition, but spiritually he's very ambitious. A devotee has a very, very high ambition. He desires to become a speck of dust in the lotus feet of the servant 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 and a thousand times removed of the Supreme Personality of God. So such an exalted position is not attained by being lazy. Krishna consciousness means intense love of Krishna. So devotees, they cultivate an intense mood of surrendering to Krishna. So everyone can do that and should do that. Narad Muni has shown how that is possible by his own personal example. And in the present day also there are so many devotees shown by their personal example. So this is our process. Sadhu Mahadana Gamanam to follow the path chalked out by the great devotees. So now after many years of difficulty of this uh, Krishna conscious movement is just picking up nicely in Mangala. Mangala Devi. That's the origin, originally Mangala Devi. So uh, Mangala Devi, this town can can actually become Mangal by the Hare Krishna movement. So please make your lives Mangal and make the whole place Mangal by spreading Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Is there any question about this? How can a student take up Krishna consciousness? This is the question. Take up a big bag, put your hand inside it and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It's the same process for everyone. Of course, there are various difficulties in student life, but there are various problems in everyone's life. There's a lot of pressure in student life. On one side, there's pressure to study, and on the other side, there's pressure to be very fashionable, up to the minute, cool, and so on. Cool, how do you translate that in? You, in it's a, that usage, it's, there's no such thing. There's no such concept in Indian language. They don't have such silly ideas. Being cool means cutting a profile, showing yourself. Cool we have a tanda, something like that, shital. But it's not, it's a different usage altogether. Some time ago I saw, it just on some yard, some young boys playing cricket. They're all about eight or ten years old. And one of them was leaning on the back like this. And the other was twirling the ball like this. So I don't watch cricket. To tell you the truth, even though I'm born in England, I don't even know the rules of the game. Not that I was such a great saint, but I played football. Not <laughs> but anyway, um, by the way, this one boy was leaning on the bat and the other was twisting. I could understand they must have copied this from the cricket players on the TV. Because the way they're doing it, it's very, very cool, you know. So, how to be a... Krishna conscious when you're a student, when there's so much pressure on you to be a cool guy. Well, I was a student and shortly after that I took to Krishna consciousness. And in student life I understood that all this business of play acting, acting a show to impress others, it's all nonsense. We can actually take up Krishna consciousness in student life if we don't subscribe to the values that most other students do. You can study and go on with that, but you should understand that this is not the ultimate goal of life. Generally, we recommend students who are taking up Krishna consciousness that you go on with your studies and do well. Because There are various reasons for that. Because uh, one thing, if you don't do well, then people will say, oh, Krishna Bhakti spoils your life. Actually, it does, but uh, <laughs> it spoils your material aspirations. But people, most people, they can't relate to that very easily. And another point is that you see after qualifying, then that degree is supposed to get you a job, so you might as well get the degree and get the job. You see, if you have to sit in the college for so many years, then you might as well take advantage and then you can, you know, instead of getting, instead of driving a rickshaw, you can maybe uh, drive a computer mouse or something like that. Somewhat better, so-called better job.
Of course, I think many times the uh, the rickshaw drivers they earn more than in many cases than people with jobs who have got degrees. The only thing is that they drink it all off. So, uh, well, even if you think, well, later I might become a brahmachari and join the ashram like that, no. you might think like that. Even then, uh, if you're going to preach Krishna Bhakti, then the first thing people will ask you, what is your educational qualification? What, whatever you're doing. So people don't take you seriously. In this country, somehow or other, it's become like that. That people, they tend to take not take you very seriously. People who are so-called educated, they tend not to take others very seriously, unless they're also educated. There's a new caste system in India means educated and uneducated. If you're uneducated and you have a lot of money, then you're considered okay. So study and chant Hare Krishna also. And associate with devotees, that's very important. Temple programs, like that. For your personal day-to-day -day guidance, you can ask the local devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.